before we start this video, a large thank you to Dizzy for their support on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, my friend. Hello guys, and welcome back to the next episode of Create Dark Souls in Unity, and today we are going to start the foundation for our spellcasting system. Now that means we have to do a couple of things. We actually have to make the spell itself, and then make how we're going to select it via combat. So first let's make a folder. I'm going to call this Spells. I'm going to make another folder, I'm going to call this Items. I'm going to put this in my scripts folder because we're going to have multiple types of spells. And by that I mean we'll have like uh, projectile spells, uh, healing spells, and they're all going to derive from the regular class spell which we're going to create. And spells are technically items and we're going to treat them as such. So I'm just going to drag this in here as well. I'm going to go in here now into the spells folder. So let's go item spells and right click create. C sharp script, I'm going to call this spell item. And then I'm going to open that up into Visual Studios and we will get started. So, what do we need on a spell? Well, first let's run our namespace because it is tradition and we need a namespace to do anything. Let's erase the start and update method and I'm going to make two public game objects. The first one will be called spell warmup effects and the second one will be called spell cast effects. And this is going to be particle effects we're going to store as game objects on our spell. And this is because in Dark Souls, you actually have a warm-up uh, warm effect, rather, and then the actual casting effect. And then we're going to have a public string for our spell animation name. Um, so yeah, in Souls, if you're actually casting a spell, you can actually get hit out of it uh, midway through the cast, and you'll cancel the cast. So there's actually the, uh, the holding part of the cast and the throwing part of the cast for almost, I think, all the spells, actually. So then we're going to say header spell type. Public bull is faith spell, public bull is magic spell, and public bull is pyro spell. Now, you guys can use um, you guys can use enumerations here. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to use bulls because there are only three types, and I think it's rather straightforward. So next, next I'm going to say header spell description, and this is going to be a text area component for a description of what the spell does. And I'm going to say public string spell description. Okay, and next we're going to add two virtual voids, which we will overwrite depending on the type of spell. Uh, I'm gonna call the first one attempt to cast spell, and that will be the uh, warm up phase of the spell, if you will. I'm just gonna say debug.log, you attempt to cast a spell. Then we're gonna make another virtual void. You can call that successfully casted spell. And this will be the actual spell effects firing, uh, the game object of the special effects and the actual effect the spell has on the player. Or if it's a projectile, it will instantiate a projectile and then you will launch that towards your target, etc, etc. I was going to say debug.log, you successfully, debug.log, you successfully cast a spell. Spelled successfully wrong there, so let's correct that. Okay. Excellent, now let's save that. Now on the input handler here, as you can see on our handle attack input, we have if rb input, if rt input. Now we're gonna expand that our combat system a lot, so we actually have to make this a lot different. We're gonna clean this up quite a bit. So I'm going to copy all of the logic in here and erase that. And then I'm going to go and I'm gonna remove the player attacker script from the player and add it to the player model. You'll see why in the future, it's because we're going to use this to fire animation events. Uh, and we can't do that if it's not on the same game object as the player's model itself. So I'm gonna find where we call that. I'm gonna change that from get component to get component in children. We only call that on the input handler. So let's just get it there and save it. And then on the input handler, if RB input, I'm gonna say player attacker dot handle RB input, actually handle RB action. And we don't have that made yet, so let's make that. Now, depending on the weapon we're holding, we're actually going to select an action. For example, if we're holding a melee weapon, well, then quite obviously, we're going to have a light attack as our action. If we're holding a spell casting item and we have a spell equipped, then we're going to have a spell casting option. So I'm just going to say handle RB action. I'm going to paste what I erased from the input handler here, but we're going to move that uh, very shortly. So let's call the player manager up here on the top of player attacker, okay? And we're gonna call that on awake. We're gonna say get component in parent. 
So this is going to be uh, basically reorganization and a reconfiguration of our player attacker script, and we're going to make it um, a lot more modular and able to handle, um, you know, like a future archery system and our spell system. So let's go down here and handle our B action. And we're going to say input handler dot combo flag uh, equals true, and then we're going to erase the player attacker here because we're already on this script. And then we're going to actually have to call the player inventory up top. So I'm going to put that right below the player manager. I'm just going to say player inventory. And remember, since the player inventory is sitting on the game object above this one in the hierarchy, we have to say get component in parent, much like the player manager. So let's just say player inventory equals get component in, in parent, Ugh, player inventory. Okay, minimize that. Come down here. We're going to say copy this input handler because the combo flag is on the input handler and erase the player attacker. And we're good to go. But right now, this is just only going to handle a, uh, a melee attack with a, a weapon like a sword. So we need to do something about that. So let's minimize this right now. Let's pretend this isn't here for now. We're going to copy and paste it somewhere else momentarily. So over on the weapon item, what we're going to do, we're going to create a new header weapon type. And again, this is on the weapon item script. Uh, we're going to say public bull um, is spellcaster. And then we're going to say public bull. Again, you can use enumeration if you'd like. I'm going to use bulls. Um, is faith caster. And then you can say public bull is pyro caster. And the last thing you can say is public bull is melee weapon. Okay. So again, if you would like to use enumeration, by all means, um, I'm just going to use these bulls. I think this is fine for the, uh, the few selections that we have. So next back over on the player attacker, we're going to say right here on the under handle RB action. Uh, we're going to say if player inventory dot right weapon dot is, for example, a melee weapon, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, okay, handle our melee action, which will be a light attack. Then we're going to say else if player inventory dot right weapon dot is faith caster or spell caster rather at first. Well, then you're going to want to know we're going to want to handle our magic action or a spell action of sorts. And then we're going to repeat the same. We're going to say if player inventory dot right weapon uh, is faith caster. Well, that's also a magic slash spell action. So we can say handle a miracle action, which we can all tie to the same function if we wish. We'll see what we do after we get this function completed. And then we can say else if uh, player inventory right weapon is um, spell caster. I'm sorry, pyro caster. Uh, well, we're going to handle the pyro action. So. There we go, excellent. Now, about this code right here, this would technically fall under what we will call our melee action um, right here. So we're gonna copy this down here, but first we're gonna say public void perform RB melee action. So let's copy this right here. and us erase it from there. That's what we took from the input handler originally. Let's paste it there, and there we go. Let's minimize that, and let's place this right here. Perform melee action. So you can see where this is going. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna make a region here so it's a bit neater. I'm gonna call this, let's call this attack action. So this is the action you've selected after um, you have went through your input options. So like, you know, your melee action, your spell action, you could be your, your blocking action. Um, you get what I'm saying here. And up here, we're going to call this, call this input actions. So your RB action, your RT action, your LB action, your LT action. It's choosing um, which input. And then from the input, we're choosing an action based on your weapon. So that, I hope that's clear. Um, it's very modular and will work very well in our favor when we're setting up our spells and our future archery system. So down here, let's actually create uh, this function right now, where it says handle magic action. So we have perform RB melee action. Let's make a perform RB uh, magic action or spell action or whatever you want to call it. It's all the same, really. Perform RB magic action. Now, I'm actually going to put them all in here under the same action. I, I, I could call it spell action. So we need to pass our weapon item because we need to know what weapon we're holding so we can know if it's a faith caster, a spell caster, or a pyro caster, for example. Uh, and from there, we can deduce what we're holding and then we can check for a spell in our inventory. And if we have that spell, we can see if we can cast it. It's very straightforward and very simple. So if our weapon is a faith caster, for example, so we're holding like, you know, a talisman, all related to Dark Souls, then well, we wanna check and see if we have a faith spell equipped and we don't actually have a current spell created yet. So I'm gonna make that right now. So if our current spell is not equal null, Let's copy current spell and go to our player inventory. And right above right and left weapon, let's make a public spell item 
uh, current spell. And think of this like your D-pad. Your left and your right weapon is the current weapons. Your left and right hand. Your spell item is the current spell you have equipped. Um, so if our current spell is not null, and and player inventory dot current spell is face spell. I'm not sure if that will give me an error if I'm a spell equipped. I think it might. I think I have to do the check after, but for now we'll keep it like that. Um, so let's say check for FP. So see if enough folks wants to cast it. And then we can say attempt to cast the spell itself. So then you can actually go to your spell option and attempt to cast it. And based on the animation and the spell effects for the spell, it will do that. And then if it's successful, we can actually cast the, uh, the spell itself. So we can say perform RB magic action. And you can see how that is actually a very solid foundation for our spell base. But right now we can pass the player inventory right weapon. So let's save that. Okay, that looks good. And we can actually paste this. You know what? Actually, we can erase these last two functions here and we can keep it all together right now by saying player inventory uh, or player inventory dot right weapon is faith caster. And we can do the same thing with pyro caster. Okay, cool. Now you're gonna need to go back in the game to your weapons and check is melee weapon. Otherwise you won't be able to do anything. So I'm gonna go to my sword here and check off is melee weapon. I'm gonna go to my butcher sword and check is melee weapon. And my unarmed also is melee weapon. I'm gonna hit play and see if I get some errors. I think I forgot something, I wonder what it is. So I'm gonna swing. Okay, we got an error, so let's click that and see. Our input handler is not being called. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's because we switched the location of player attacker. So our input handler needs to be get component and parent now. And our animator handler actually as well, I believe. Uh, and our weapon slot manager. I'm just going to double check. Yeah. Weapon slot manager also needs to be get component now because we're on the same game object. And our animator handler is also just get component. So trade those out uh, because, again, we move this from being on the main game object to the model's game object. And save that. And I think think we should be good now back in game here let's see and we can swing our sword again yes we can cool okay guys i want to give you a bit of a visual representation of what's going on so first we have the what button are we pressing this happens way back in the input handler so rb and from there we're going to go okay let's decide what action we're going to do based on this rb input so what weapon are we holding okay we're holding a melee weapon cool then let's go do a melee attack which because this is rb is a light attack Oh, okay, we're holding a spell caster. Well, are we holding a faith caster? Yes. So because of this, we're going to try to cast a faith spell. So I made this visual representation because I'm hoping that it will clarify what's going on for some people and make it look a little bit neater. We're going to further expand upon this in the next episode, and we're actually going to create a healing spell uh, with the effects and the whole the whole kabang, and we're going to do it all. This is very awesome because I'm really excited to dig into this. The spell system is going to be really fun to do, and we're going to have a lot of fun testing this stuff out. So as per usual, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. It does help get my series around. Don't forget to leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're feeling super generous, guys, check out my Patreon below. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you in the next video when we create our first healing spell. You know, aside uh, editor's note while closing, didn't realize how bright that yellow was. Sorry for burning your redness. Uh, my bad.